the first example here we're just gonna stick to one page and we're gonna scrape the mystery section on books to scrape.com and uh, it's fine to scrape this site they encourage it we're gonna uh, right click on anywhere on the browser go to inspect element and click on the console you can also open up the developer console view using F12 on your keyboard just go ahead and copy and paste the nine lines of code in here and we'll go over them in detail in a minute so we're just gonna paste this in and hit enter and we have a list of the 20 books from this page you can see sharp objects is the title of the first one 4782 482 pounds title is sharp objects so we got the first one and then it goes just down the list uh, here and we have the price the title and the product link so if we clicked on the product link to go to sharp objects it would be the same as if we just clicked on here so so it's in a JSON array uh, it can be easily exported I'll show you in another video how to export this as a CSV file so let's break down the code starting with line one this first part here is the beginning of an, an immediately invoked function expression also known as an iffy is a JavaScript function that runs as soon as it's defined this is the beginning of it here and the end of it is actually right here and everything in between runs in this local scope so that it doesn't interfere with other things that are running on the page that we're injecting into not totally necessary for this example but we're gonna go ahead and start practicing it now because it'll come in handy later the next part here is a variable named collection that houses an empty array that stores our scraped data. Line 2 is a function called clean text that takes in a string and replaces any new line, space, tab, or return character, any number of instances with a single space. So if you have a bunch of tabs or a bunch of new lines and garbled text, it'll clean all that up, replace it with a space, and then it'll trim off any beginning or ending spaces from that string. Line three is where we actually call clean text over here, extracts the title, price, and the links from the elements that we're going to query. So if you want to learn more about the query selector, check out the description or my GitHub. And if you're unfamiliar with ternary operators, it's just an if else statement that says if this value is truthy so if we find the element that we're looking for essentially uh, then we want to return that same query but we want to select a an, an attribute either text content or in the case of the link we want to capture the href and then we're going to clean that text and return it to wherever the text from L is being called, which is being called for uh, the title and the price and the link down here, but we'll get into that in just a second. All right, line four is a variable called books, which uses the query selector all to extract all of the container elements that store the information that we're going to grab for each book let's go back to the website and I'll show you what I'm talking about so if we uh, right click anywhere near this book here and click inspect element we'll uh, find the element that stores all the book information so it looks like the article element that has the class product underscore pod contains this book but let's check this other one just to make sure that that's the same type of situation so yeah I'm taking this class name and using that to extract our list of books using query selector all and in order to do a class you just have to add a little period it's kind of like a CSS there's these are CSS selectors after all so period product underscore pod gets us all of our books inside of a list now that we have those books inside the list we can loop through them and that's what we're doing with this for loop on line five for each book of all of our books we want to extract the title using our text from L so we pass the book element which is just that uh, article element that has the uh, product prod class 
and we're extracting the H3 from it, and inside that H3, we're extracting an attribute called text content. That's what uh, this is here, and you can see that that's the H3 inside of this uh, article here. So price is the next one. We're doing pretty much the same thing. We're taking the class price underscore color because that's where the actual price value is stored. I can show you that as well. Here we go. We just right click on here and we can see that price color is the class of this little P element and inside it is our 47.82 pounds. And so we're gonna get the text uh, text content from that P element of price color for each book and that will be our price a little plus sign here turns that into a number but first we need to make sure we extract the pound symbol from the text so that we can convert it into a number and uh, that way you can do sorts and things we'll talk about all that later in a later video alright so the next part here is link and it does the same thing as the other two for the most part except uh, we're instead of the text content we are extracting the href value from a link element inside the book so that's this um, link for the title so that's this here so we grabbed the a element and the href attribute which is this link here on line seven, we're taking the information that we just collected, storing it inside an object here, and then pushing that into our collection, which is our empty array that we're using to collect the information as it's being looped through. So once it's done doing that, we simply console.log the collection. That's what we saw earlier. So we just copy paste, and we'll run it one more time for good measure. Oh. It keeps trying to autocorrect on me. It got me that time. All right, so here we go. Ran that same code that I just showed you, and we have our list of 20. It's, of course, yeah, starts at 19 because we got uh, zero index. Well, that concludes our first tutorial on building a scraper in the browser. Uh, in future episodes, we'll actually start crawling and exporting paginated product data. We'll learn how to use the fetch API, the DOM parser API. We'll convert the uh, JSON data like we just uh, saw earlier in the CSV so you can export it out into uh, you know, Excel or Google Sheets or whatever other spreadsheet software. Uh, we'll be crawling the entire domain at some point and uh, downloading things like images straight from the browser using JavaScript. So stay tuned, feel free to like and subscribe. Feel free to drop a comment, let me know how I'm doing. And uh, thanks for watching.